Hello world, this is Zan playing Late Age Caleb in Lucid's Dominions 5 Tournament. We're here on turn 57, and I opened the turn up with Breath of the Desert, uh, specifically on the province of Summer Edge, because I know that Atlantis has coastal ice forts. Uh, if you don't remember from the previous turns, they are in a bit of a Throne Rush situation that I'd like to prevent. And I figure, okay, maybe if I break their castle and then jump my forces on it, I can place some part of it. I don't have any mage support in the region, I just have units. And that's okay. So I'm going to try and stop that, and that's why I'm casting Breath of the Desert. We have a few more battles, of which one of them is pretty important. I believe it's this one here in Pantocrator's Bounty. So we have Utgard sallying out. He has the legendary handful of crossbowmen, who, I may have mentioned this earlier, participated in a battle where I, I, it, it was one of the turns I wasn't able to display the battle, but these crossbowmen were able to headshot one of my most important casters in the battle and ultimately lost me the battle because of their accuracy. So they return. Uh, we have the remaining Garm Herdings, whatever reanimated long dead he can muster, some Watchers, some Thugs, the Scout Killer. Uh, impo most importantly, we have a legible Gothic Strip, the White Mage, with a fast casting hat, a Thistle Mace, because we know what he's going to cast, and Armor of Knights. Fortunately for me, I don't know what this chick is going to do, but she's not going to do a good job of it because she's in the same square as the White Mage, and everyone in their Dominion's career at least once is going to put a White Mage in the same space as other mages, not knowing or remembering that they do have a chill aura. I assume this Norna has cold resistance. She doesn't. Great. So that's two pretty good mages he has that are not really going to participate much in this fight because of that chill aura. That's great to see. He's got a few other mages, a Adept of the Golden Order, uh, Free Upkeep the Prophet. They have all got boosters, so they're all pretty spooky, but overall there's not too many mages, thankfully. On my side, I have, again, the Might of Caelum, the entire army, with whatever mages I've got. Plenty, I'm sure. Uh, some mixture of Strength of Giants, Weapon of Sharpness, probably Turn 1 Thunder Strikes, Wailing Winds. The works. And let's see how it goes. Alright, that's the uh, first volley of Thunder Strikes and Banefires. Looks like I hit into the mage core. Did I kill anybody? Unfortunately not. Oh, that did damage. He jumped right in the middle there. Didn't go well for him. I'll pause it in a sec. Oh, we saw another Banefire land right next to oh, his most important mage. If that, if that would have hit that square, I think this fight would be completely different. Uh, we've killed a Mountain King, but gosh darn... We have Doom and Foul Vapor, so everyone is cursed, and this fight is now against the clock because I do not have a caster for Serpent Blessing. Or rather, I do have one caster, but she is very far away, and I cannot risk her. Not the way I risked um, I got earlier. Yeah, we do have some Bane Fires clearing out squares in their mage line. And very rapidly, we do have my units getting killed and being turned into Soulless through Life After Death. Thankfully for me, Solus have a decent amount of hit points, and they're poison resistant, so Foul Vapors is just going to do a little form change, but it's not too big of a deal. Okay, ultimately our globals, or our global enchant or battle enchantments are Ravenous Swarm, because in theory I would hope to snipe this guy. Uh, we have Wailing Winds, Blood Rain, but Scrotty, so <laughs> thanks, I guess. Eh, granted, I guess his army is entirely made up of Berserkers and reanimated Long Dead, so doesn't matter. We have Solar Eclipse by the Golden Order Adept, which means in base form, my dudes have no stats. Once they turn become Solus, I guess... Oh, Solus can't see in the dark either. That's kind of weird that they can't see in the dark. Oh, okay. Uh, we have Foul Vapors, and then I'm doing Natural Storm, because once again, I want to isolate my area infantry units on the enemy side of the battlefield and force them to slowly walk away, uh, should they route, rather than just immediately fly off. Is 
So we have some evocations coming in. We have a lot more air elementals coming in. Oh, something has gone away. Okay, but we have a lot of air elementals coming in, and they're doing work because I'm assuming... Yeah, he does have Skeletal Legion up, so my regular units are definitely not going to do a good job against these Garm Herdings. But the air elementals with their untyped trample attack and or shock attack. Oh, this is another thug I had missed. Um, regardless, with, with their trample and untyped attacks, they should be okay. Hopefully. Uh, I used to have a much larger army and it's greatly reduced in size. So this is definitely a bloody, bloody fight. But uh, it looks like just sheer numbers has uh, brought me on top. I'll take it. <laughs> I will take it. How bad was this? This was... Well, I find a lot of items, which is good. He has a total defeat. Of which almost all of his kills, I think. Like 48 kills on the Garm Hurtings is kind of low, actually. I think almost all of my deaths are just Foul Vapors. Such a stupid spell. We have loss of a crap ton of units. Uh, however, some of my mages turn into soulless warriors, which is kind of cool because they're mindless. So it would have been good to have them a few turns ago during Astral Corruption because horrors won't attack the mindless units. So they're kind of late <laughs> in, in showing up. Uh, we lose a lot of elders, but I'm sure some of them became soulless warriors. Other ones of them became white mages. I think we're okay. We lost some Woodhedge Druids. They probably had gear on them. We lost some Iron Crafters. No one cares. We lost some Harab Seraphs. No one cares. So I think I'm okay. I think I just lost units. A, a, a lot of units. 300 and something. Because 211 turned into Soulless Warriors, which as a unit are kind of trash. I'd rather them fly around. Soulless Warriors are good for the mages, not for the units. So about 200 turned into Soulless Warriors, and then I actually lost, lost. Another, uh, what is that, 135? So definitely a crippling defeat to this army. But not insurmountable because we have another battle now where I capture Utgard's Last Fortress. Meaning we get to have another End of Nations title because Utgard has been permanently vanquished. Astral Corruption is gone. We have some other events. None of them are good because Misfortune sucks. Never taking it again. And as seen, we do get some of my mages coming back as white mages. And these are pretty good. These can thug and do some cool shit. So it's not even that bad that they died. Uh, I think the most important thing, and I was talking about this earlier, is that nature mage that could have technically cast reference blessing. I don't think I mentioned it in a previous video. I hope I did. But if I didn't, we have a naiad that was summoned by my pretender god before he got himself killed. And this was made for a very specific purpose. This is if my Pretender God dies again, this Naiad's job is to cast one singular spell. And that is Awaken Ivy King. And that's going to mean this battle where I lost 300 units to Foul Vapors because it's such a stupid spell won't ever happen again because I will have pretty tanky commanders that can ideally cast Serpent's Blessing because it is such a stupid spell. Foul Vapors, that is. Serpent's Blessing is not. Super Serpent's Blessing is the best spell in the game. Fight me on this. After watching this fight, <laughs> fight me on this. Anyway, so let, let's uh, let's move over to turn 58 now. Uh, you guys will have a bit of a chuckle when you see my ritual list. Because it's a bunch of rituals. Who would have thought? I do a bunch of call yatas, which I'm just playing Mage Roulette here, and we'll check out what I get. We get some research, because I now, now I want blood magic, because I'm going to be able to do stuff with it. We cast augury everywhere, because I want to find stuff, and I find stuff. Where is it? In Utgard. It, it's not, there are no indie mages allowed in the original Kalem or Tianchi lands. They're all in frickin' Utgard. So we get Pyromancers and Adept of Firflegaton. These are really good. 150 gold for three paths. Fantastic. Slow to recruit. Eh. Kind of sucks, but hey, that's uh, six fire gems in one province. Of course, it's on the ass end of my empire and next to a throne. But uh, that's a pretty good find. That's a pretty damn good find. 
Uh, the voice of Apsu's let me down this time, but that's okay. And Brise, uh summons her Ivy King. Her one job in this game has been complete. We have an Ivy King, and Ivy Kings can make more Ivy Kings. Unfortunately, we do notice this. This global enchantment comes up again. Which global enchantment is it? It's this one. God damn it. Score to the bottom. Sea of Ice strode up and attacked all my crap again. Because if you remember last turn, I mentioned I'm Breath of Wintering this province to break the fort down. And all my commanders did. Damn it, man. Atlantis, just let me play the game. <laughs> well, turns out, though, Atlantis really doesn't have anything in this region anyways, unless he sneaks it into the province without me knowing. So I think the fact that this is broken, look at how crap that wall integrity is. <laughs> I think the fact that this is broken, and I do still have some commanders, I should be okay, because I think the battles happen first. Yeah, battles happen, and then you die to water bundles. So that's good. Uh, alternatively, we also have here Midgard jumping on Satala now. He's got uh, an army, a metro crap ton of Einhir, a bunch of storm demons, some chaff, and holy Galdermen. That's 32 Galdermen. That is a big, big army. So now the opposite situation happens. Atlantis was doing a throne rush, mainly on the person the number two player with the second Bound of Thrones. Well, what's going to happen now if they're the only two participants is this Midgard guy is going to take Atlantis's thrones and potentially also Throne Rush. If we look at him now, he's got one, two, three, four thrones. He's about to take a fifth throne. And the only ones he needs is here in Cormark. That's a problem. That's a big problem. So my primary army is here in the Stone Heavens. I could technically move up to Asandias and try to take that. The armies that I have in Summer Edge is not really mage supported. And I'd have to fight through Atlantean occupied Ulm to get to Satala. And then fight this absolute monstrosity of an army. But just look at it again. That is a lot of Galdermen. That is a lot of Storm Demons and Einhears. With the Bishopfish, of course. So, yeah, I beat up Ulm, but the world is still in a disaster. Pan is nowhere to be heard from. He's just chilling. He is building a fort in every single province with a temple in every single province. He's just taking a bet right now. He's just betting. Hey, if I do nothing, I'm going to take a bet that I can do nothing, build forts everywhere. Everyone's going to try to throne rush, and I'm just going to take a bet that nobody succeeds in their throne rushes so that I can prepare for the biggest Gift of Nature's Bounty spell ever. Because, you know, no one's going to do anything about it because they're all throne rushing, right? <laughs> Lovely. Just a lovely situation overall. Yeah, more bad events, I'm sure. Misfortune 2 sucks. Look, four death gems. Clearly, it's a free scale. Never mind all the income I've lost. All these famines and crap. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, that's turn 58 right there. <laughs> I managed to kill Utgard and remove Astral Corruption. I've managed to, you know, kind of win a war after I failed to save the game earlier. But now Midgard's going to win. <laughs> that sucks. On the plus side, let's go see what I got with my Yada calls. So it looks like I got another Pyra Pyrica, which is fantastic. These girls are great. Uh, vampire Summoners, Blood Mages, sed Seductresses. Oh, it's Dream Seduction. Never mind. That sucks. Uh, did I do something in my capital? And I did something in my capital. I've got uh, a Deva of Shooting Stars, so now I can actually dispel things. Uh, these guys are fantastic. Uh, these pats are ridiculously good. Uh, this is like a soul drain. You can give them boosters and have them do like bone grinding stuff. This is a very good mage. Uh, and then we have this guy who maybe a little bit ago I would have been really happy about. This is a very good mage. This guy's going to cast flames from the sky and stuff. I mean, obviously... 
you want to cast flame from the skies, you just summon a flame spirit, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's not bad to have gotten this guy uh, for 40 death gems. I think it's 10, 10 gems more, and then he just has, you know, some more paths. It's not bad. He's just outdated because I got this guy now. So that's probably my worst roll, I think. And then since I have the Nyad, I don't need the... There's a Water 3, Death 3 version. I don't think I need that one either. I mainly just want more of these guys. Uh, this is the Will of the Fates caster. 10 out of 10. Definitely worth... This guy and this girl are definitely worth the gems. The other two, not as much. Over here... This is the, my one indie for all the paths that I get, and they can still... This is just like a wingless Harab Seraph, essentially. <laughs> Slightly better, I guess, in magic, but worse in everything else, like movement or being young. Uh, so my one indie, I'm trying to recruit them because I, I want that fire air path so I can cast Breath of the Desert on Atlantis and shit. But that won't really matter if Midgard wins or if Pangea goes nuclear. So we're in a bit of a tough situation. I have a plan, but you guys won't know what it is until next turn. So, see you then.